Mine will focus more on um, the two-third gender principle, but also just mention a few gains that we had as women and how far we are. So there's no doubt that the constitution brought a new dawn for Kenyans. Is there a doubt about that? Is there a doubt about that? Oh, good. So even for women specifically, we actually pride in the uh, constitution as one of the drivers of our success and also changes in women's lives. But we have realized that since 2010, we get one gain. The Marriage Act is passed. Shortly, the Attorney General announces all customary marriages must be registered. How many marriages will be registered? By show of hand, how many of you think we can even get 50%? of customary marriages. You know people who have been under customary marriages and need their marriages registered? By show of hand, 50%? Okay, 30? 20? Okay, please tell me 10. <laughs> Come on, someone is whispering 2%. Anyway, that's for another day. I'll just mention a few of those gains, but I said I'll focus on two-thirds. Maybe in another forum we'll look at all these other gains. We talked about matrimonial property. We came with a, a whole section, Article 45, that talks about 50-50, 50, 50, 50 equal rights yeah, in marriage. Then we get a matrimonial property act that, yes, recognizes the women's contribution in the homes, but still takes us back to prove our 50%. How many, I won't ask the women in the house, but how many men can your wives show 50% uh, of how much they take care of the home in terms of monetary contribution. Okay, let me try again. 30%. 20 I'm sure I'll go to, to lower than that. So these are some of the clawback clauses that we get, yeah? After a very, very, very fruitful constitution, very progressive, but when we start uh, um, passing enabling legislation, we, we go steps, uh, like, you know, like one step ahead or 10 steps ahead, 20 back. And those are some of the challenges we are dealing with. So this is one area that FIDA Kenya is in court to challenge that because we think this is taking us back to many years back. I think as FIDA Kenya even went up to the African court to challenge this and we were promised by the government of Kenya, come back home, we can sort this thing out, we'll pass it in our constitution. It passed in 2010. But in 2015, we were taken back again to where we came from in 2000. Uh, and there are many. The land, land and uh, property rights. We had a very good clause that talks about consent. Please, before you sell our matrimonial home, can we have both of us consenting to it? Recently, members of parliament were back in parliament, and that clause was thrown out. Again, it beats the purpose of women being equal you know, to men. And when I talk about equality, I don't talk about the muscles. We are not back to Adam and Eve. Eh? We know what equality we are talking about. So there are so many gains we have and so many global closes. And even in practice sometimes, look at even citizenship. I'm sure most of you now would go like, okay, you can pass on citizenship equally to your male spouse. But how practical is it when you tell a Kenyan woman who's married to what? A Ugandan man. Yeah, just here in East Africa where we are talking about now it's one community. At the end of the day, someone somewhere in a legislation somewhere says you must have lived together continuously, legally in Kenya for three years before you can even get a resident permit. How many women will succeed to keep men in Kenya for three years waiting for that registration? Again, let me try 10%. Five, you people be optimistic. <laughs> See, these are the member of parliament you vote for. Yeah, so those are some of the gains we got and the kind of losses that women are also going through. However, let me concentrate on the most recent one, the two-third gender principle. In 2010, we passed this constitution. We said at least one-third. You know, at least one-third, because women are the ones who are less, right, in parliament. So I said at least give us one-third. Or opposite, you can say at least make sure not more than two-thirds are of the same gender. So um, come 2012, just before the 2013 elections, when we were supposed to have uh, the first uh, implementation of this gender principle rule, what happens? The Attorney General goes to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court says, okay, we give you an advisory opinion, and the best advice we can tell you is that it can be achieved progressively, but up to 27th of August 2015. 
We say, okay, fine, elections come, we don't get the numbers, we of course don't hit the one third. So we work very hard and we say, okay, fine, let's get a methodology by August, uh, 20, 27th of August 2015. Just before the date, in fact, I think on the 25th, Parliament passes an extension. So we are not ready. Two years down the line. We are not ready, we'll, we'll pass this, give us one more year. So we move to one more year, that is 27th of August 2016. What happens? Do they pass the legislation? No. And we have all these forms of debates, bloated parliament, silver platter seats, women just wants to be flaggers, we haven't called bonga points. I mean, we, all, we had all these names. As if in 2010, when we voted for this constitution, was that clause in the constitution or not? Did Kenyans vote for Article 27.8? Or was it a lesser article? It was an article just like any other article in the Constitution. So Kenyans were aware when they voted for Article 27. They were aware when they voted for Article 81B. So that doesn't pass. So um, our, one of our sister organizations goes to court and uh, crew and crown. And FIDA Kenya will join as interest parties. And the court, again, through Honorable Mativo, says you are not a constitutional parliament. Why not nominate women who actually were in the ballot box? And they tried. They went out. It's not, it's not like they didn't fight through the election process. Because that's the same uh, uh, narrative we get out there, that they just want to be given seats on a silver platter. So I think those are some of the things we can think about. The women are trying. And we all know that there are various challenges to get there. If you hear the story of Laboso, you'd wonder. I had so many friends who told me, I don't think the Kandunjin community can think of voting for a woman. But look at them. They voted for a woman. Look at Lesuda, Samburu. Most people thought, how, oh, you know, that's not, it's not yet there. But they have chosen a woman. So it's possible. But before they get through all these challenges, we need that opportunity of an affirmative action. So I hope everybody in this room will leave knowing that it's not just about uh, of asking for free seats, additions, bonga points, whatever name you want to call them. But it's also women's rights to participate in a representation of the people. Thank you very much.